Flora Moreno, uh, it's just after midnight here. Um, oh my gosh, so I'm giving you an update on everything that's going on. So, um, I've got my interview with the Normanton police today. I thought it was next Friday, because she keeps saying next Friday, but in my head, next Friday is next Friday, not this Friday. Like, next Friday over here is, like, the next coming Friday. But to me, next Friday is the one after this one. So I had um, thought that my interview with the police was next Friday, but it's tomorrow. Well, today. Anyway, so basically what's happened is um, the Normanton police wanted to insist that I had some mental health support thing, uh, support, they wanted me to have like a 24-48 hour um, mental health support assessment thing before I came in for the interview and um, when I started telling people all hell broke loose, <laughs> people started contacting me. <laughs> People started contacting the New Zealand High Commission <laughs> and saying, you got to do something about these police and the NHS and the way they're treating you. It's not right. you got to do something. I had um, hashtagged them in on a tweet as well. Um, and I got a phone call from the New Zealand High Commission yesterday. <laughs> You're right, girl. What the hell's going on? I mean, that's not what he said, but... <laughs> so I was on the phone for about 44 minutes with the New Zealand High Commission. <clears throat> and I told them everything from start to finish. And boy, oh boy, can I, can I can tell you that the New Zealand government are not happy. They are not happy. I told them everything about how I was denied food for up to five days, um, how I collapsed tw twice and was told to get up off the floor, I told them about the anaphylaxis, about how my stomach split open and my skin was rotting, and I kept asking for medical help, and I was denied medical treatment and that, and he just kept going, oh, is that right? And I was like, and I gave the police the evidence about my phone being hacked by... Um, Rocio Ray Nunes of the Air Force and blah 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 and I gave the police the evidence and I had to do my own police investigation and when I gave them all the evidence they didn't look at any of it I said about how I recorded everything that night and the police didn't look at any of my evidence and I got locked out haven't seen my kids forced to medicate you know and they I said they keep um they've put like a slur on my name you know they've put all these mental health diagnoses on my name because, and then, oh, and this is the thing, and I said, I, I, I needed strength in there, and I gained it from connecting with Artua by putting feathers in my hair, and when I walked in to have my weekly meeting with the doctors, and he said, why have you got feathers in your hair, and I said, because I'm gaining strength from my ancestors in order to connect with Artua, my God, they upped my medication, and he goes, oh, is that right? Huh. <laughs> and I said, yeah, and I said, I was vomiting so much that my scars split open, and I got infected, and, you know, they got infected, and I said, and I had to um, steal salt sachets from the cafeteria and wash it out and bite down on, like, the blanket and grip my teeth and pour salt into the the wound in that to just keep it clean. Um, uh, that was for about eight weeks, I think it was, I had that infection. Um, yeah, so they're not happy. I said every time I stood in my Māori sovereignty, they would try and up my medication. And I said, and the other thing that he found interesting is when I said to him, half of the nurses in there keep going to the doctors and saying, why is she in here? She doesn't belong in here. This this is, you know, there's something not right. You've got to let her out. And he goes, oh, is that right? And I said, yeah. I said, you know, like um, I can give him the names of the nurses that were actively, you know, 
standing up for me. So what I've been told to tell the British government is, and the West Yorkshire Police and the NHS, I've been told to say on the behalf of, of the New Zealand High Commission that New Zealand is now watching. So um, I've got my interview with the police. Um, the New Zealand High Commission are going to be calling me after my interview with PC Wright. Um, and I've, I've had to tell her that um, they are going to speak to me immediately after the interview and that I'm to tell the lawyer that if there's any funny business that they're to be called immediately, um, they're aware of what PC Wright is trying to do with this mental health thing um, and they are wanting the lawyer's information to be passed on after the interview because they're go going to be keeping a very close eye on how, how I'm dealt with after this point on. Um, and they, I have said to them, he asked me what I wanted to have come out of this. I said, I want my record cleared. I want my name cleared of everything that was said about me. I said, because I told him the reason why I was doing all of this. I said, you know, I said, my mama and my, my kui and my fire, my mum and my nanas, my nana and my aunties taught me how to, um, I was raised with a understanding of the planet that I can use it in a way that heals people. I said to him, you know what it's like. I said, I've got my own oils that I've um, developed. You know, I said, because you know, I'm a reverend. So I said, you know, I, um, I'm a reverend, like I, I minister for indigenous people. And I said, and you know what it's like, you know, when our people are dying and we're preparing them for the afterlife, and for the tangies and that, you know, we prepare their bodies and that. And I said, I've made ritual oils and all of that um, that Chris has gone and stolen. And I said, and I pointed it out to PC Wright when she came here to tell me that I was um, under investigation for stalking. I said, he's stolen my indigene and charging people money for it in the name of black magic and paganism. And he goes, oh, is that right? And I said, yeah, I said, look, I've taken everything that my people, <coughs> everything that my iwi have taught me, I've taken that and I've turned that into a service so that I can um, make money to build this home to rescue um, the indigenous children. That So I was telling them everything and I said, and Chris stole everything. He took everything out from under me and then tried to get me you know, smeared with this na lab label of like mental illness. And I said, and as soon as I went in there and told them what I was and what I do and my physics and all of that, my biorhythmics, my physics and that, I said I was immediately labelled as mentally ill. And he goes, okay, then that's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, so I could tell that. He was gritting his teeth. I could, I could, you know, you can tell when someone's talking and they're gritting their teeth because they're so angry. Like you can feel the anger rising that they have to like keep their mouth shut. That's the vibe I got from the guy from the High Commission. So something incredible has come out of this. I told them about how I've whistleblown on Sumo Digital as well, Christopher Black and Sumo Digital. So I said that I'm requesting um, protection from the New Zealand government. And I just explained the whole thing there. So I know that I've got, he said, if I need anything there, you know, it's there, it's fine sort of thing. So that's good. So now New Zealand know what's going on. Um, I said, I want my record cleared. I want my boys back. And I said, and I want justice for what was done. So he said, let's get this interview with the Normanton police out the way and get this lawyer in place. And then, you know, and then we're going to talk after the interview and um, take the next step from there. So it looks like I'm finally getting justice. I've finally been heard. 
and I just I couldn't be happier because now everybody's going to be held accountable for what they've done and the beautiful thing is is that yesterday the 2nd of May was the anniversary of my mum's death and I had shown them in, a ho in the hospital a dream that I'd found um, in my dream book from 2007 where my mum was, was dressed as a you know, Māori warrior, surrounded by Māori warriors, running across this field, yelling and screaming, running towards um, British people in like high-vis vests and they were like bus drivers and blah, 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 charging across the field towards each other and when they met in the middle, they joined forces and charged towards like me in the dream. And we were in Southport, and I was with my ex-husband, Chris, and my sister, Paula. And all the windows started smashing and all of that, and there was all, like, glass and, you know, building debris and that all over the ground. And then there was just, like, money everywhere, like British money everywhere. And I spent years trying to figure out what this dream meant. And I thought I knew what it meant. I thought it might have had something to do with COVID at one point. Um... And now I realise it's because of that dream. On the anniversary of mum's death, I was given um, legal support and representation by the New Zealand government to defend myself against claims against the British establishment and a gross injustice served on my name, on my work and my ancestors. And... Um, I said to the doctors, I know that how where this is going to end, so whatever you do to me, I'm not afraid. Um, and they they just kept insisting I was nuts. And it turns out I was absolutely spot on, 100% correct. So that's what the dream meant. I'll put a link in the description box below, but it is in my community section box, um, a copy of the dream. And, um, yeah, I got finally got legal support and representation, diplomatic support from the New Zealand government on the anniversary of my mum's death um, because of a gross injustice that's been done against my Māori ancestors, which my mother is, um, she was the woman who wore the crown in my family. It was, you know, her bloodline that was the royal bloodline. So um, her grandmother was a um, great grandmother was a Māori princess. So um, <clears throat> yeah. So now I've been told to let everyone know that um, New Zealand's now watching and uh, listening to. They're going through all my videos that I record when I was in hospital. The the witnessing everything, the copies of the reports, like, they're going through all the videos and everything, so um, after this is dealt with, then we can deal with the rest of them, and um, yeah, so I just thought I'd let you know, so if there's anybody out there who is going through the same thing that I'm going through, don't give up, because if I can, if I can do it, you just have to be patient and you have to keep the faith. Don't give up. If you know you've been wronged, if you know you have the proof, you know you have the evidence, just keep talking. Eventually someone's going to listen. Just don't give up and keep the faith. So I will keep you posted. It's just getting so exciting. I'm so, uh, it's like uh, we're finally going to be free. We finally get, we got, I'm finally going to get justice for what was done. I'm going to get my boys back. We're finally going to be free and Chris is going to be held accountable. The NHS is going to be held accountable. The West Yorkshire Police are going to be held accountable. At least the police officers who didn't do their due diligence anyway. The ones that changed reports, lied reports and caused a lot more trouble than was necessary. Those ones. Um... So, yeah, I love it. And because, you know, if, if New Zealand gets involved, Australia will have to get involved as well because they're like, you know, like the overprotective big brother when it comes to New Zealand. So um, <laughs> we're like the scrappy little, the little sibling and they're like the overprotective big brother. So, um, 
yeah so anyway i'll keep you posted it's all getting very exciting and before you know it i'll be standing before a judge presenting my case and um i know where this ends and um i'll finally be able to start rescuing children and um, making my video games and movies and that so i'll speak to you later i've got to go because i've got to be at the police station at noon and i've got some um i've got a support network <laughs> turning up here in the morning to offer me moral support so um i will speak to you later kakiti anō